So we're doing integration by parts. This time, this funky thing, e to the ax cos bx, very particular kind of integration by parts, and it leads to a loop, and then in that loop, you find that you can insert the original equation to solve it. It's, it's pretty clever. All right, so let's get started on this. First, we need to choose what u and v are gonna be. Using our detail acronym, we can say that uh, dv dx should be an exponential function. So we'll call this v dash and we'll call this u. That's gonna work. You can look into the future and see that it'll get us where we need to go, but that's what I'm aiming for. So that leads us here, u equals cos x, v dash equals e to the x, and this is what u, u dash, v, and v dash are equal to. And now we can use our integration by parts formula. Once we do that, we end up in this neat little place here. So uh, we've subbed in our u and our v into our formula. We get e to the x cos x minus the integral of negative e to the x sine x with respect to x. Okay, um, this is a problem here, right? Because this is of the same form, which means we still need to do an integration by parts, but we were expecting a loop. Um, something we can do to make this easier is there's a negative here. There's a negative on the inside of the integral. We can move that negative outside and make that positive. All right, and now let's do our second integral here, our second integration by parts by integrating this. Now the question is which one should be v dash and which one should be u? Well, you don't change. You don't change your ideas about this. So this original one was our v dash, so this one again. Okay, uh, let's do that. So what I've done here is take this integral and move it down to here. And the integral of e to the x sine x, where this is v dash and this is u, we work through here. Here's where I did my little u, u dash, v, and v dash. I sub those into my uh, equation, uv minus the integral of v u dash with respect to x, and I get this piece of gold here. And this is where people get either stuck or they say, oh, I see it, it's fantastic. Because look at this section here integral e to the x cos x with respect to x. We've seen that before. We know that the integral of e to the x cos x was the thing that we were originally trying to find. And we know that the integral of e to the x cos x with respect to x is e to the x cos x plus the integral of e to the x sine x with respect to x. Which means that we can take what we just figured that out as and put that into this equation. So we'll call this equation 1, we'll call this equation 2, and now I'm going to sub equation 2 into equation 1. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to move a little bit slowly through here just to make sure that we get it clear. We now know that the integral of e to the x cos x with respect to x is equal to e to the x cos x plus the integral of e to the x sine x, but we know that the integral of e to the x sine x from this equation is e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x cos x. So now we can just pick all of that up and put it right there. Now, you might be looking at that going, that still doesn't feel like it helps because I have an integral here and I have an integral here. But what you have is an integral here and the same integral here being subtracted. If I move that over to the other side, if I add the integral to both sides, I'll get 2 times the integral of e to the x cos x with respect to x equals the stuff that's left over. We were really done by the shouting here because we were trying to find the integral of e to the x cos x with respect to x. Uh, we haven't found that. We found 2 times the integral of e to the x cos x uh, with respect to x. So if we just want to know e to the x, cos x with respect to x, we just multiply this side by one half. And we are finished. I suppose except for a neat little plus c on the end. All right, so I've really filled up the board here, so I'm gonna sit down here. Um, it's important to note that this, while it might feel complicated, it's a pattern. It's a pattern when it comes to e to the ax, cos or sine bx. Anything of that form is going to lead you into this loop that then allows you to stick the integral back into it. And it's always going to lead you to this little 
factor of two out the front here that you can then multiply by a half. So in that sense, this integration by parts, this one's a more formulaic one than some of the others that you need to puzzle through a little bit. At least you know where this one's heading.